Hi everyone, welcome to the review session of Chapter 7 Consumers, Producers and the Efficiency of Markets. Today we are going to cover three core concepts Consumer Surplus, Producer Surplus and Market Efficiency. Firstly, let us discuss Consumer Surplus. To understand this concept we first need to understand the concept of willingness to pay. Willingness to pay is the maximum amount that a buyer will pay for a good. And the consumer surplus is the amount a buyer is willing to pay for a good minus the amount the buyer actually pays for it. Let us graph our demand curve to better understand the concept. So, let's say that we have equilibrium price of $5. The area below the demand curve and between the equilibrium price will be the consumer surplus. Now, let us also graphically try to understand what happens when the equilibrium price changes. So, let's say, again, we have our demand curve but now the equilibrium price is $2. Now our consumer surplus will consist of three different parts. First part is the initial consumer surplus that we have already discussed in the previous graph. The second, the rectangle, represents the additional consumer surplus to initial consumers. So this is the increase in consumer surplus to initial consumers. Finally, from the reduction of price, some new consumers will benefit. And the consumer surplus of these new consumers is represented by this third small part. Now, the next principle is the producer surplus. As consumer surplus depended on willingness to pay, the producer surplus depends on cost, which is the value of everything a seller must give up to produce a good. And consequently, the producer surplus is the amount a seller is paid for a good minus the seller's cost of providing it. Again, to gain a better understanding of this principle, let us graph our supply curve. So, let's say we have an equilibrium price of $10. And the producer surplus is represented by the area between the supply curve and the equilibrium price. As in previous situation, let us also discuss how the producer surplus changes with the change in equilibrium price. So, let's say that now the equilibrium price is $14 instead of $10. As in case with consumer surplus, we have now three different parts of producer surplus. The first part is the initial producer surplus. The second part is the additional producer surplus to initial producers. This part represents the greater benefit connected to the higher price of previous producers, the producers which were able to produce at a price of $10, and some of them even had producer surplus. And the final third part is a producer surplus to a new producers. Finally, let us also discuss the concept of market efficiency. Firstly, what is efficiency? Efficiency is the property of a resource allocation of maximizing the total surplus 
received by all members of society. Now let us try to understand what is the total surplus. Because we have discussed the consumer surplus and we have discussed the producer surplus, but we haven't discussed the total surplus so far. Let us start from the formula of the total surplus. Total surplus equals to consumer surplus, which is value to buyers minus amount paid by buyers, minus producer surplus, which is represented by the amount received by sellers minus the cost to sellers. From the economic view, we should keep in mind that a higher total surplus translates to higher social wealth. To illustrate this, let's say you want to buy ice cream. You are ready to pay $4 and the price of an ice cream is $4. This means that your consumer surplus is zero. Now, if the price of the ice cream is reduced to $2, you have a consumer surplus of $2. So, your willingness to pay stays the same, $4, and the price now is $2. Subtracting these two values, we get a consumer surplus of $2. You can buy your ice cream and spend the remaining $2 on other things. For example, you can buy another ice cream. Returning to our formula. After some simple calculations, we may derive a new formula, which is total surplus is equal to value to buyers minus cost to sellers. And here we arrive to very important conclusion. If total surplus represents the well-being of a society, then a well-being of a society in a particular market can be increased either by increasing value to buyers or decreasing a cost to sellers. Again, graphing supply and demand will help us to better understand the concept. So we have our supply and demand curves in equilibrium and the areas under the curves represent the consumer and producer surplus. From your school math courses you may deduct that the maximal total surplus is at the point of equilibrium. Given that free markets in the long term convert to the equilibrium point we may conclude that free markets in the long term increase total surplus. Finally, we can also think about how elasticity affects the total surplus. So for this purpose, let us have a separate graph of supply and demand. And to visually understand this, let us rotate our curves to get more inelastic demand and supply curves. As you can see, the area under the curves increases, thus increasing the surpluses. So the conclusion here is that the more inelastic are supply and demand curves, the higher is the surplus. That's it. Thank you for participating in the revision of chapter 7.